So this is the place we're staying in Singapore with some of my wife's relatives. It's absolutely beautiful. We're talking like talking parrot, teak wood, stairs, just gorgeous interior. Actually, it was designed by the owner and then built on this uh, lot here in Singapore. Everything about it is just amazing and beautiful, except for one thing. The Wi-Fi is awful. I was getting disconnections all over the place. I was getting slowdowns. I couldn't even send Hangouts messages half the time. So being me, I was like, okay, so what's your Wi-Fi solution? What's wrong with your internet? Because the speed test is fine. It's 50 down, about eight up, which should be plenty for all of that stuff. And he shows it to me and I go, oh, okay. So these guys are using the ISP provided modem switch router access point combo unit. The structure of this place is pure like foot thick concrete and then they've got a repeater down on the landing for the second story that is supposed to provide better coverage downstairs. Awful solution. So it's time for us to figure out some kind of a networking home makeover while we're staying here. What the crap am I doing back here? It's like I traveled through time to tell you guys that Intel's new 750 series SSDs utilize the NVMe standard, providing speeds never seen before on consumer storage drives. Click anywhere to learn more. All right, so we're here at the famous Simlim Square where I'll be trying to find some better wireless gear and just kind of generally checking it out because I've heard a lot of stuff about this place. Number one is that it's an awesome place to find pretty much anything electronics and computery. And number two is that it's a great place to get scammed with everyone giving different sorts of advice. But uh, apparently uh, Mobile 22 PTE Limited and Gadget Terminal PTE Limited have had a fair number of complaints as of the last uh, period year, so I should watch out for those guys. Important notice. Yeah, let's head inside. They have everything here. That last place had like an entire rack of machetes. I wish they'd had this place when we lost our microphone in Taipei. I wonder if I need one of these. Probably not. I think there's five or six stories. They got all kinds of fun stuff on the second floor. RC stuff, some more computery type stuff, and ladders. Lots of ladders. I guess if it's an entire, I mean, Singapore's what, 8 million people? So you're gonna have a third of the population of Canada all within driving distance of this place. What do you need online stores for? Whoa, look at this. It's like a sea of technology. Okay, so I think we found our first networking gear shop. Hello. I am looking for some wireless stuff. Ooh, Lunch. Yet, yeah. Okay. Um, do you know what time? Maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes? About 20 minutes. About 20 minutes? Yes. All right. I will come back in 20 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm actually looking for, um, let's see, I think it would be about a 30 foot ethernet cable, white. Oh, you only have bulk for white. But probably you can check with my so the third floor looks like the place to be for getting the networking stuff we need. This is her shop where I was told to uh, ask them about the fasteners and, uh, and white cables. Ah, oh, that guy, bring in everything. I need a 10 meter white ethernet cable. No, only Cat7. Only Cat7. Okay, how much is that then? It's a little overkill. Oh, nice. It's like a flat one too. That's actually kind of awesome. $20 is a lot for a 10 meter ethernet cable though. Okay, so uh, another question for you. Do you have any uh, fasteners, like adhesive, uh, like sticky fasteners? Maybe you can make a payment. If this fits, for... I will buy this. Deal? Yep, still good. Okay, so I need, let's say three packs of that. This one left one. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> You already made the sale, and now you yeah. don't have enough of them. Okay, well, last one. <laughs> I, uh, okay. One box. How many are there in here? Oops, I spilled them all. Fifteen. Okay. Mm. Okay. I'll make it work. Um, so I want this and this. <laughs> Twenty-eight bucks for our Ethernet cable and our uh, fasteners. 
All right, so let's head up to the fourth floor. Maybe we can find some more wireless stuff there before we head back to the shop on the third floor. Wow, three laptop stores right in a row. More laptop stores. Hey, more laptop stores. Too bad I'm not shopping for a laptop. All right, well, these guys are more like my speed. I need a 128 gig SSD and I need a two gig stick of DDR2. 99 for my SSD and 46 for my RAM. I think I can do better on the SSD, but I'm not sure about the RAM. Thank you. Um, two gig stick of DDR2. $55. 55? To DDR3 cheap. Yeah. Um, how about the 128 gig SSD? 105. 105? Memory World. 58. How about the SSD? 139? Yeah. Looks like we're back to the first store. You guys win. Everyone okay. else's price sucks. <laughs> okay. DDR2? Hello. 800. DDR2 800, perfect. Yeah, I come all the way here to buy computer hardware, right? You want to be in the video? 145, all right. Everyone else gave me really bad prices, maybe because I'm white. We got our RAM and SSD, but we still need our networking stuff. Like all these laptops are broken. Why do you keep them? Just in case? Oh good, yeah, this one does include both the PoE adapter and the unit. So in fact, I won't even need a PoE switch. That's excellent. Another option would just be to get like a Nighthawk X6 and call it a day. You know, repeat things. Yeah, I don't want to use a repeater. 529? These things are like 300 bucks where I'm from. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I will have to, uh, I will have to come back. No problem. Okay, another network specialty looking store. Cash price 378. 378? Yes. Wow. Maybe this place has stuff. At least it's not a laptop store. Okay, there's nothing in there. Uh, what's pricing on the AC66U? 243. 243? Okay. Not bad. So far you're the best option oh, right now. Good. 245 for an AC66U. I'm gonna have to. No PoE. I have to get power to it somehow. This is ridiculous. Like, I promised your uncle one cable to the pillar, not like two cables to the pillar. So, you know what I think we're gonna do? Oh, I don't like this at all, but we're gonna go get one AP Pro and we're going to hope that the coverage is good enough from right in the center. And if it's not, then we're gonna need another one. Whatever they have there, I wanna buy it. The first study cafe. This place is like a maze. I can't even find the stores we were shopping at before. <laughs> AP Pro 389. AP Pro 408. Ah, we just saved 20 bucks. Do you guys have uh, Unify AP Pros in stock? Okay, well, I don't have much more time to shop, so I don't think we have a choice. Yep, let's do it. Well, overall, I'm not happy about it, but at least they uh, waived the 3% stupid credit card surcharge after I asked, what, three times? All right, so we're back. Let's unpack our spoils and get started here. So there's actually two projects because there was some complaining about the, uh, the desktop computer upstairs. So for that, we need an SSD and a stick of memory. So we got that. And then for the Wi-Fi, we need our new Unify AP Pro, our Cat7 cable, and then these cable management tabs here. So let's get started, shall we? This is so not a Cat7 cable. Well, I guess it could be Cat6. So what's the easiest way? Well, this door gets to be open a crack from now on. Is that going to be a problem? That, my friend, is how it is going to be to get good internet. Okay, like right down here. So we get a nice clean line. Okay, so I'm not sure about ideal locations. Part of the problem is this structure is all concrete. 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 Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to have a choice. So either I think I'm going to do that pillar on the second floor or I'm going to run it to mount on this thing. What I might ask is what's the priority because if the priority is the downstairs, then I might be better off to go here. Oh no, my phone. Hello. 
Oh, that's what you get for having bad Wi-Fi. So one of the reasons we had to spend so much on our access point was PoE, power over ethernet, so that I don't have to run those two wires. And what I like about the ubiquities anyway, is that they come with an injector in case you don't have a PoE switch. Do these two pronged ones work here? Oh, you have an adapter. Oh, handy. All right. Did not count on that. So we might need to use some kind of adhesive backing and I didn't get any extra. Oh yeah. Yep. I also need to steal one of your ethernet cables. Okay, now let's go plug this guy in. Oh, I'm sweating so much. Let's see if we got power. I might have to go switch those things around. I always get it wrong. Any light? Oh, there it goes. All right. Now we gotta get the uh, console fired up. Okay, so to configure the thing, we need to install the Ubiquiti controller software. So let's fire up this ancient Dell Optiplex 760. This is actually the computer I'll be upgrading and get it set up. Once we've got the controller set up, it doesn't actually uh, ever need to interact with the controller. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, we just need to get it set up the first time. Who says techs don't, you know, work out? No wonder they want this computer upgraded. I can't even <laughs> do anything in an internet browser. Even the mouse movement is slow. Oh my goodness. This computer needs more than just a new SSD and some RAM. The most up-to-date browser is like IE8 or something. All right, so per the usual, the Ubiquiti software is super easy to get set up. So all we've got to do now is manually set up our channels, manually set up our widths. Um, during the setup wizard, I was able to set up the uh, SSID and everything. So what's left now then is to have a look at the surrounding area. And you can see that this is why I thought it was so important to have five gigahertz because actually from the from the outside, from the backyard, there's a bunch of stuff in here, so stuff on channel six, seven, um, their old Wi-Fi was on channel one. Actually, both the ax the repeater and the original access point were on one, so they're just talking over each other. But on five gigahertz, basically empty. So actually, actually, the only thing we can see right now is uh, the one that I just put in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play around with positioning a little bit. We're going to make sure that from everywhere within the house, we've got a decent signal. Then we're going to go ahead and set this baby up. All right, so here in the back corner, we can see there's a couple on channel 36 from this neighbor, but our strength is still eh, not that bad on five gigahertz. Naturally, this floor is all very good with the access point right in the middle. Even five gigahertz can punch through, you know, one concrete wall okay. Actually, should be workable. All right, so way at the back is actually quite good. So, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try actually running some speed tests in this position to see how it goes. Here at the back, you can see what I was talking about with 2.4 gigahertz being completely congested and five gigahertz basically being our best bet to not be completely interfering with absolutely everything else. Yeah, you won't be FaceTiming back here. Ooh, Russian girls. So now that we've determined the location we want, I'm just gonna throw a little sticky note on here that has the admin password and uh, all that good stuff. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the uh, mounting plate. Then I have double-sided adhesive. That's the best solution I was able to come up with. I got two different kinds, so I'm gonna hedge my bets and I'm gonna use half of each. <laughs> While well, what I wanted to do, to have it on the bottom stair, Nope, okay, this one. <laughs> Gotta apply pressure, about 30 seconds. Okay. Ah, um, I do wanna leave this, like some kind of a knot here, actually. If the adhesive fails, I don't want it to come crashing to the ground. So this is where my cable management tabs from upstairs come in.
Straight lines are good. All right, how many tabs do I have left? Oh, nine. So that is nine feet. Okay, so we're gonna go every foot. Okay, so I think we're done. Now, our connectivity up here is the only place in the house where it's really not as consistent as I'd like, not as good as I'd like, but I think we found a solution because it's only very rarely that someone is gonna be using something like a phone up here. This is actually the worst performing device in the house for Wi-Fi. That laptop over there, that old laptop, gets 40 megabit from the position on this desk right here on our range network. So that's what we ended up doing. We made two SSIDs, speed and range. Speed can saturate the 100 megabit uh, connection that we have here at this location from anywhere downstairs pretty much. And then range is able to, even on our worst case scenario device, give us about you know five to 10 megabit up here not too shabby. Then what we did was we reconfigured the existing access point as more of a failover. So we called this one attic. And so if range on a particular device is not working well up here, you can connect directly to that one. Then we left the range extender downstairs and with a little bit of repositioning, I'm able to get 20 megabit uh, at the very bottom floor with that one, but we're just gonna leave that unplugged unless our ubiquity access point fails or something like that. So now we have not only better speeds pretty much throughout the house, but we also have a failover system in the event that it, you know the access point dies or something like that. So not too shabby. Is it the ideal solution? No. What I wanted was a 24 seven controller running and two access points, one at the top, one at the bottom. Then I think I could get anywhere from 50 to 100 megabit anywhere on the property. That would have been great. We weren't able to do that because you know how things are. So this is not a bad solution overall. What madness is this? I'm back in the studio. Crunchyroll must have bent space and time to bring me back anyway. Crunchyroll is a site created by anime fans for anime fans. It has nothing to do with bending space or time. They offer the most current episodes of new shows straight from Japan like Food Wars and Jintama. And they have a large collection of the most popular anime series like Naruto and One Piece. What's cool is that all the content on their site is professionally subtitled. And if you have a premium membership, which you can go to crunchyroll.com slash Linus to try out for 30 days of unlimited free, completely ad-free, you get 1080p streaming as well as new shows from Japan within an hour of their premiere and you can stream anywhere on a variety of devices like your phone, tablet, or game console. So once you've decided you like premium, you can continue for $6.95 a month. So head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus to try it out now. So guys, um, this has been a bit of a different format. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you hated it. Uh, leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated than that. As always, we have links in the video description where you can buy a cool t-shirt, not like this one, like Linus Tech Tips one. You can give us a monthly contribution if you like our work. You can change your bookmark to Amazon to one with our affiliate code so we get a small kickback whenever you buy access points or whatever else. And I think that's pretty much it. Thanks again for watching. I already did that. Don't forget to subscribe.